peace and freedom and grace be with you. My name is John Clifton. Welcome to another ed edition of Hard Fire. Uh, today is going to be a different subject. Uh, we've done a number of subjects about real estate and uh, eminent domain and other issues relating to property rights. Uh, there are other issues related to that that impinge on liberty and people's property and uh, and change in, 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 in neighborhoods. And tonight we're talking about down zoning, uh, which is a new variation of old-fashioned zoning and equally as monstrous in terms of its impact, uh, negative impact on people's freedom and uh, people's enjoyment of their own communities. Uh, with me is a very concerned Brooklyn resident uh, named Gil Midane. I think I got the pronunciation right. Um, why don't you introduce yourself to the public here? Well, my name is Gil Midane, and I've been living in Greenwood Heights for um, what's now called Greenwood Heights for about mm -hmm. 15 years. Um, living in Brooklyn for since 1977 or so. Yeah. Um, and what, I'm, what I've seen over the last two years is something that I thought was absolutely tremendous. Mm -hmm. We're having more shops open up. We have people staying here, coming to Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. um, new buildings are coming in. Um, the area is, is turning around and wonderful things are happening. Mm -hmm. And now I'm seeing people who seem to be upset about a lot of these things or not realizing their, their ramifications of their, of their actions mm -hmm. are looking to preserve um, building types as they exist right now and want no change to continue into the future. Oh, so they want to like freeze frame Brooklyn, or at least their section, uh, in one permanent form, Correct. and they feel that it's reached its maturity in terms Correct. of its development. There were business decisions made 100 years ago to mm -hmm. build one and two story buildings. Um, it might have made sense to the developers 100 yeah. years ago. Surely, at least in the South South Slope, I mean, these buildings are not beautiful buildings. Mm -hmm. um, it is not center slope where you have four story, five story, yeah. um, beautiful, beautifully put together brick, uh, brick buildings. We have quickly put together um, lower income for the time, mm -hmm. um, wood frame houses that have not really been kept up in very good repair. Wow. And now that people want to actually move into the neighborhood mm -hmm. and are buying it and has some value, um, it's come to the point where it makes sense to relook at the nature mm -hmm. of the way the buildings are right there. Yeah, and in some respects, this is an expensive neighborhood anyway, uh, in the slope area, and it, it yes. might as well bring it up to the standards of the 21st century in terms of the I think building so. design. One of the, you know, we do want to have a slightly more building than, than, than what's there right now. One or two story building, this does not make sense. Mm -hmm. um, you having so many people coming into the neighborhood. Um, it used to be that as soon as people were able to economically, mm -hmm. um, they would leave the city. Yeah. Um, the children would leave the city. And now mm -hmm. what you're having is that perhaps because of reduced crime and for a variety of, variety of other reasons, people are staying in the city. The new waves of immigrants that are coming in mm -hmm. are not just replenishing people that, that are leaving, mm -hmm. but are now adding to the population that we have over here. Yeah. Uh, new York's population has increased tremendously over the last mm -hmm. few years, and yet we do not have more housing stock or very little more. Right. And we're seeing a, a, a huge increase in, uh, in demand and, and prices. And people don't want to see, I think what follows from changing of property in, in terms of the construction is the changing of populations. Yeah, right. As you were saying, if, if new people come in, uh, existing people might decide to, to go elsewhere for a variety of reasons, to, to go to another place that looks like where they want to live mm -hmm. or to uh, afford that other place if, if, if housing gets too expensive in a certain area. Uh, a variety of reasons, but it sounds like they don't want any such change in personnel and population to happen. They, they want demographics as well as construction to stay the same. I think for some people it's an issue of demographics. Um, you can certainly sympathize with that. Um, Old-time mm -hmm. institutions are no longer there as mm -hmm. their population shifts. Uh, you see that in New York whenever a new population group enters an area, mm -hmm. the, old, the older population group feels displaced and is mm -hmm. uncertain and unhappy with the changes that took place. But that is part of the New York experience and there's good and bad to it. Mm -hmm. The other half, is, the other part of it is that some people actually want the physical infrastructure to stay the same. And to me, that's the main point that I'm talking about. I think that anybody living, most people living in the South Slope, mm -hmm. if we could snap our fingers and bring the center slope four-story brick buildings mm -hmm. and have them whoosh replace the one and two-story wood frames that exist right. now, just about everybody would be ecstatic for that mm -hmm. sort of change. 
So what I think should be allowed is that, I mean, right now developers want to come in there and do just that sort of change. Mm -hmm. By downzoning, by preventing this, we have, we're doing all sorts of, th we're, we're preventing important new housing mm -hmm. stock from being built and we're taking away from the property owner property rights of the people that are owned buildings. So here's my understanding of downzoning because uh, you're talking about from the perspective of Brooklyn, um, where I come from, Queens, uh, the way it works is um, there's lots of big houses in certain areas like Bayside mm -hmm. uh, or Bayside Heights or other areas over there and um, other developers wanted to, wanted to come in and build even bigger houses. Mm -hmm. Not, not you know, apartment buildings, but big, you Correct. know, mini mansions and uh, right. huge uh, private homes. And they got the community there um, got into an uproar uh, in terms of wanting to control the way the neighborhood looks, mm -hmm. and they prevented, through city council activity, uh, that neighborhood from being allowed to just have developers come in and build bigger uh, private homes. Right. Um, now, the, the, the irony of this is that when I'm going around in other parts of the borough um, talking about housing in a, in a campaign, and saying that perhaps we should lighten up and let people rent out their basements to, mm -hmm. to whomever, you know, right. or however, and, and, and let them do with their own property what they want to mm do. Um, I'm hit with the argument of, well, it, we can't have too much density in the neighborhood. Uh, it would ruin the neighborhood and et cetera, et cetera. But over there, in these other areas, it's the exact opposite tendency. They want to have even fewer people right. being able to, to, to come in there and build new housing that, that, that's even more spacious. Right. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not a matter of density at all. Um, it's a matter of command and control. And I'm, I'm getting the sense that same thing's going on here where you've got a neighborhood of people who want command and control over exactly what their neighborhood is going to look like. It, it may be that way. A lot of the people that are most against the down zoning are new immigrants to this neighborhood. And by immigrants, mm -hmm. uh, they could be from Nebraska or Connecticut or wherever. Mm -hmm. But they came over there and they particularly like the way it is mm -hmm. right over mm -hmm. over the way it is right now with one and two story buildings. Yeah. From my perspective, as far as the density, we see some of the nicest areas in the city, um, such as Brooklyn Heights and mm -hmm. Central Park Slope, having much higher density than currently exists in, in yeah. Windsor Terrace and Sunset Park and in Greenwood Heights, where mm -hmm. the main com controversy is about. Um, the zoning as it is now, or was before the down zoning, would have made it to roughly the same amount of density as exists in Center Slope. Mm -hmm. And nobody who walks down Center Park Slope goes, oh my God, this is an oppressive, oppressive community. Everybody is astounded by how beautiful it is. Mm -hmm. um, we have 50 and 60 foot buildings there. That's five stories, six stories, um, four and five because you have higher mm -hmm. ceilings. Nobody walks down the street and goes, oh my God, I'm oppressed by the height or by the density. Right. So to bring the same sort of structures over to South Slope, I can't see how there'd be any re rational argument mm -hmm. against it. And there's so many, so many arguments in favor mm -hmm. for it. Yeah, who would be a, uh, opposed to a better house replacing uh, a shabby or very, very old house? You're having people that seem to like the idea that they want open spaces. Mm -hmm. um, one and two story buildings is an ideal. And if that's the case, I don't know why you're living in Brooklyn. I mean, go back to Nebraska, live in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you want to bring the ideal of suburbia to Brooklyn. It doesn't yeah. make sense. Um, we're living in Brooklyn. It doesn't mean we have to have 30-story buildings everywhere. Right. But there is a point where having four and five-story buildings is not necessarily bad. Yeah. And um, more than anything else, in today's society, in New York today, mm -hmm. we don't have enough housing. Yeah. Um, it's the Democratic Party. We even have the Conservative Party people and mm -hmm. the Green Party. All these variety of parties from different perspectives are saying that mm -hmm. we need more housing in New York. Right. Um, this is uh, curious, and here I should bring up that there was a number of people we wanted to bring on the show who were going to defend mm -hmm. the activities of, of some community residents who want to proceed with down zoning, right. uh, including um, council members uh, Bill de Blasio Correct. and um, Sarah Gon Gonzalez, is that yes. what names? Um, and the entire community board seven, which mm -hmm. ought to be Correct. concerned about this uh, for the neighborhood you're talking about since it's part of their... Um, their coverage. Uh, Brooklyn Heights Association, you know, you can go on the lawn uh, about people who ought to have been here uh, as a, you know, as representative of the other side. And that brings up the question as to why is the other side ducking, discussing this in the light of day? I think they've already, they feel they've already won the situation, the, the argument. 
um, I think that intellectually there's absolutely no grounds for their position. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically not in my backyard. Mm -hmm. um, the politicians may or may not do, be doing this because they see votes. Um, people are scared of change. So it's demographic change and that certainly ch uh, scares people. Yeah. Um, there's, there's also people being fooled into thinking that because um, more expensive condos are coming in, it means that's what's forcing out lower income people. Mm -hmm. When I, f I personally feel that's exactly the opposite. What's happening mm -hmm. in, in many cases is you have middle class and upper middle class families that will come in and buy a two, three um, family building and um, they would take it over for the entire family. Mm -hmm. And so in by this one fell swoop, a middle class family who was not able to afford a two bedroom or three bedroom place in Manhattan, mm -hmm. Manhattan coming over to Sunset Park, coming over to Windsor yeah. Terrace, coming over to Greenwood Heights, buys this three-story building mm -hmm. and displaces two lower income individuals. Mm -hmm. If they did have, or families, if there were places, if there were nice luxury condos that they yeah. had as an alternative, they might have chosen that. Condo mm -hmm. living is easier than owning your own house. Yeah, and because some of the responsibilities are corporately or community shared there by, by the group, by fiat. Uh, having by a real. house is like having a child. Yeah. I mean, you have to fix the roof, you mm -hmm. have to paint, you have to paint, you have to fix up the, clean the yeah. sidewalk. There is a mm -hmm. ton of work to be done. Whereas with a condo, um, you're paying somebody else to do that. Yeah. And it's economically quite fe uh, feasible for that. At some point, it seems like in some ways, there is a tendency for the, the groups that want to con have more control over the manner and look and nature of the neighborhood and the community. Uh, they want to condoize and co-opize uh, everything, you know, uh, you know, you, you can be in a private house over here and they can be in a private house over there, but they somehow want uh, your area to, to stay the same, you know, almost as if you were in a condo cooperative arrangement where, where everybody had agreed to this kind of thing. That's yeah. an interesting point. Um, I, I guess some people do think that uh, just because they move into a neighborhood, it means that the neighborhood needs to stay that way forever. And once again, what we're doing when we're saying this is that we're enshrining business decisions that were made 100 years ago mm -hmm. and making them into law, even if it doesn't make sense for us today. Yeah. I'm going to break here, and we're going to go one by one through um, Devil's Advocate when, okay. when I come, to, come back to you. But I'd like to bring to the attention of uh, the viewers that on Hard Fire we discuss a variety of topics from a pro-liberty perspective. And pro-liberty in the sense of the people who are involved with this show uh, means libertarian, you know, the people who want you to have uh, maximum rights and freedoms uh, so long as you don't initiate force against others or perpetrate fraud. Uh, we think this is the philosophy of the future and the philosophy that's the fairest to all people. I, I, there are several groups that promote libertarian activity within this city and the state. I think you should be aware of uh, the Manhattan Libertarian Party who um, we have monthly meetings in uh, Lower Manhattan. Uh, you can get more details about their activities at ManhattanLP.org. Uh, Queens has a group that meets in Astoria monthly, uh, and you can find out more details about their activity at LPQC.org. Uh, and the state organization uh, you can read up on uh, on the net by looking at um, NY.LP.org. Uh, we hope that you take the opportunity to learn more about liberty by investing time and energy in finding out about the Libertarian Party. I'd like to go back to the, the question here of how you would meet the objections mm -hmm. to Absolutely. what you're saying from people who are concerned about the character of their neighborhood right. and their community. Uh, what about the issue of preserving the neighborhood or the area? Um, are there, is, are you opposed to the idea itself or is it simply that you, you're opposed to the uh, coercion involved here, with people forcing people, other people to, to make them keep the neighborhood the same. I think the first thing we have to ask ourselves, um, is it worth preserving? Are mm -hmm. these buildings, is this area worth keeping as it is? And for that, we have to ask ourselves a lot, a lot of different questions, or specifically in this, in this case, focus on, I think, mm -hmm. one primarily. Um, and that is the amount of housing stock that we have today mm -hmm. in New York City. If we had more than enough, 
if there wasn't, mm -hmm. if we had more than enough supply, if there were plenty of apartments to go around, if the prices of apartments for both rental and, buy, and buying hadn't reached astronomical um, levels, mm -hmm. then perhaps I guess the argument would be kind of moot and more academic. Should we or should we not um, mm -hmm. preserve the character of these buildings? Are mm -hmm. they architecturally worthwhile or not? Um, yeah. Is there some overriding purpose? The area is, in my opinion, and mm -hmm. seem, seemingly from a variety of books that you look at, they don't particularly mention this architecturally, mm -hmm. the area is not architecturally beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, it was built quickly, ram, uh, ramshackle uh, wood mm -hmm. frame buildings. If they really cared about the buildings 100 years ago, they built it in brick and stone, mm -hmm. as you see up on the hill in Park Slope by 8th Avenue in the park. Mm -hmm. And you get uh, simpler and simpler brick frame buildings as you, get close, as you go down to mm -hmm. 7th Avenue, 6th Avenue, 5th Avenue, and 4th Avenue. Over there in, in uh, Sunset Park slash mm -hmm. what's now Greenwood Heights, mm -hmm. the wood frame buildings are not, were not considered to be um, the best of buildings at the time. Mm -hmm. Why are we en enshrining these buildings into our zoning and, and trying to preserve them forever? It doesn't make sense. Yeah. And well, that would, maybe from the point of view of a person who, um, for some reason, um, but we may call irrational mm -hmm. maybe, just happens to like their old shabby building because it's their shabby building uh, or their type of uh, building and they, they like other types that resemble right. their house to look the same way. You know? I, I certainly I can understand that. There's no mm -hmm. accounting for taste. Um, yeah. There are some beautiful little blocks there. Mm -hmm. um, but still, one must ask oneself, um, is this something that New York, is your enjoyment of two-story buildings worth more than um, the, the owners of the property Mm -hmm. um, you're, you're limiting their particular growth, and you're also limiting the amount of property that can be built. I mean, you need yeah. more housing. I mean, we're talking about mm -hmm. um, people are paying more than they need to, and, one of the, and the primary mm -hmm. reason for that is there's not enough housing stock. Yeah. Here we have an area where developers are loving to go into, building the housing that we haven't been building mm -hmm. over the last few years, mm -hmm. um, and able to take care, in a small part, Right. It's part of this problem, and we're stopping it. Okay. Now, from the Liberty perspective, I would look at it from the point of view of are the people who want to pre preserve are willing to get together voluntarily as a kind of super cooperative and buy sections, uh, you know, uh, or contractually agree to keep certain sections that they already control or own right. the same, and then let development happen elsewhere, so long as they have their section that they control and will maintain. Well, that, Would that be objectionable? Or? To me, no. I mean, in the sense that um, somebody doing something with their own property and mm -hmm. putting a, basically a lien on it or mm -hmm. making it so that all future sales mm -hmm. um, um, are under their, everybody understands that under future sales, you can't build up, you can't change the character. Yeah. If people choose to do this, I think they'd be mistaken. I think it hurts New York City right. in a variety of ways, mm -hmm. but certainly it's their own property, and if they choose mm -hmm. to do that, bless them. Yeah. But what's being done right now is it's preventing people from building up who would like to. Mm -hmm. It's reducing the value of the property yeah. for the people who own, own it. And um, it's the hypocrisy of it all mm -hmm. that truly slaps, should be slapping other people in the face. I mean, just, yeah. just by just watching what's going on. What, what I'm getting at is that I think the market could possibly resolve the issue of, of, of pres preserving areas for people who want their sections preserved if they create these unions that will not, they're not union, mm -hmm. I don't mean in a labor sense, but in the sense of a cooperative uh, that will preserve sections that, that are contiguous, more or less, right. they can campaign and persuade others to join them in on in that format right. without it affecting the general nature of development, natural development mm -hmm. that the market would also demand right. for the times and for the needs of, of the rest of the community. It's, it certainly could. If people could band together and have a few houses and, and, and do this. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think they see that as an option. Mm -hmm. And I also think for most people, it's not, it's not, it's not considered as important as mm -hmm. enshrining into law so that it infects everybody. Mm -hmm. um, they desire to have the neighborhood be as they wish it to be, uh, no matter what the consequences of this. Mm -hmm. or, the, or what the objections from others. As I said, the command and control part of this. Some people would like a planned community. Right. Uh, even if the plan is to do nothing. <laughs> right. uh, I wonder about the other issue of, uh, is there any concern about somehow gentrification coming in in the sense of 
they're, they're not only concerned about higher density mm -hmm. in, in this particular case with uh, you know more people being able to get, be getting departments, but the people all being more uh, well healed, even more well healed than the, the people current residents are such that uh, they'll eventually be forced out because of um, higher prices. If, if you want to stratify our society in our area over here, there is no better way than to, for doing that than for this current down zoning. Because what is going to happen is that it's going to continuously price up the, apart, the, the buildings that are there yeah. to the point that only those that can spend a million five, a million seven, would buy one of these buildings and uh, can live there. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, on the other hand, if you took the same square footage and you built a four-story, five-story uh, building and you had eight families there, mm -hmm. the property would be worth the same to the, to the building owner. Mm -hmm. um, to the people that are living there, they will not have to spend so mu as much for rent as they otherwise would have been. Yeah. It would not be a $2 million ap apartment. It mm -hmm. would be a eight, eight, um, eight, dollars eight, $300,000 mm -hmm. apartments. Well, that's the consequence of a lot of zoning of whatever flavor in that is an artificial um, hiking up of the prices to, in order yes. to maintain the artificial uh, stasis uh, of either prices or, uh, or conditions of, of a neighborhood. Uh, and some people should, in these areas, should if they can only see that if that were got taken out of the picture, then prices would work, you know, in in, in, in a natural way to uh, make the area affordable for those who, at a, who for whom it's appropriate for them to be in that neighborhood. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, the thing is, whether you, you like to agree with it or not, there mm -hmm. are a lot of middle class and upper middle class people in yep. New York City, and more coming every day. Right. Uh, the crime is down. If you want to get rid of part of this problem, bring back the crime. Middle class people will go back to the suburbs. Mm -hmm. um, but what you're seeing now is that what used to be demographic trends, that when immigrants would come in, mm -hmm. they would leave as soon as they had the ability to. Mm -hmm. And now these immigrant families are staying, and their children who, uh, and others who had left before have come back. Um, the question is, where are they staying? Where are they living? And many of them are middle class and upper middle class. These are doctors. These are some are engineers. Some are people on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Some are architects. And if they will buy up a building and displace two working families, what's to be done? The mm -hmm. only way to deal with the housing problem is to is to have more apartments, is to have more buildings. That is the only way around it. You and have to the increase the supply. Work to create, you know, what housing is necessary to work for people today, Correct. as opposed to the late 19th century, or whatever. Correct. Uh, I understand that point, but very few other people do because the people tend to like what they like about an area and don't want it to be um, affected by other changes that happen afterwards. Right. Uh, that, that just seems to be the, the, the cynical issue underlying a lot of this. Uh, and, and sometimes they can just go along with changes uh, mm -hmm. that are be put in by the, the community board or the right. city council in order to preserve it because the, those changes are so invisible. You know, the, the, as I said, there are nobody on the other side of right. this table explaining their rationale for um, artificially uh, affecting the housing development in these communities. Right. Uh, there's nobody who wants to stand up and flat out say, you know, we, we don't care about the market. You know, well, the art, what, one of the key things that happened in that mm -hmm. this particular area was that a developer received, apparently, a whole series mm -hmm. of, of variances that allowed him to put up a 12-story building okay. in, um, in effect, effectively, a 12-story building mm -hmm. in a, an area that's predominantly two- and three-family buildings. People were very upset by that. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are a variety of ways of dealing with this particular issue. Um, if mm -hmm. we're going to say that we're living in New York City, we're going to accept the fact that we're going to have zoning and government controls. Mm -hmm. And part of what we have to do is not only debate the issue of to what extent the government controls exist, mm -hmm. but when it's getting out of hand, we have to step in there and ask pointed questions about why you're mm -hmm. doing this. If, if housing is, is of su such critical concern, why are we preventing more housing from being built? That's the old issue of, you know, preventing um, change, you know, whether they said it's the condition of the house or the flow of people. Uh, in the old days, they used to say, let my people go, you know, when, when describing um, resisting tyranny. And now it's like a lot of middle class people, and said, or uh, people who, uh, who want to live in modern, spacious housing, would like to be in the middle of the city instead of two hours away Correct. by commute. So it becomes a matter of, 
let my people come back. Exactly. You know, these rules and laws and um, ordinances and attempts to control neighborhoods are f freezing out the majority mm -hmm. of the, the workers of the city. Yeah. There are a lot of ancillary concerns about, I mean, yes, we, sh we need to be concerned about having mm -hmm. housing for, for working class families. But let's not get to the point where we're driving out the middle class to New Jersey. Jersey yeah. City is competition. If mm -hmm. you'd go over there, you'd be surprised at the beautiful amount of construction that's going there. Right. It is far better to have these individuals living in New York City, and if you're so inclined to care about it, that they pay their taxes over here so that we could use their money over here. In addition, where people live is where they spend their money. Yeah. Their shops, there's a variety of other things. Shops mm -hmm. means jobs for yeah for lots of people. We want to have mm -hmm. upper, upper middle class people living in New York City. Right. So in the final minute here, what would you think is, is uh, the better way to, to sum up how to address and, and stop downsizing, well, I'm sorry, down zoning of, of these uh, communities? I think one of the first things we have to realize is to what extent is the down zoning, um, is it worth more to you than having affordable housing? If you're mm -hmm. always going to be saying affordable housing this, affordable housing that, the rich are driving out the poor, then it's about time that you put your money where your mouth is mm -hmm. and allow people to build. And it doesn't have to be 40-story buildings in a, what used to be a three-story uh, three building area, but allow five-story buildings. I mean, that's still contextual. Yeah, and I think that's um, what, what should happen. Uh, what will happen, I think, is more of the same in terms of some of the neighborhood residents, squeaky wheels, trying to uh, to force laws on people who... And these squeaky wheels are not long-time residents for the most part, yeah. and they certainly don't represent um, residents. Most yeah. residents never heard about this. I never would have heard about this down zoning if I wasn't so concerned about it. Yeah. Am I secret furious that they'll come up with some new kind of thing? We'll be talking about up zoning in a <laughs> future right. years. Uh, I, we're basically running out of time here, so I'd like to thank you Thanks. Uh, for your, your, your thoughts and you're a very thoughtful resident of that area and perhaps should be a person who influences um, a change in policy so that we get away from policy, actually, and away from zoning and uh, of all stripes and, and forms. I hope the audience has been educated by this discussion and I hope you will join us for another exciting episode of Hard Fire. <laughs>